everyone. Welcome back to Show Me How to Win. We're in Taipei, Taiwan, and we're in Emperor's Force Studio. Next to me is Jerry Chen. He is the co-designer of the sequel of Hanami Koji Geisha's Row, which was uh, had gone through a successful Kickstarter and is available already. So Jerry, excited about Geisha's Row. I've actually played it before the Kickstarter, so I know how to play. Tell everybody. Who doesn't? Who's not familiar with Geisha's Road? How you play Geisha's Road? Sure. So uh, Geisha's Road I mentioned is a sequel to Hanami Koji. So you'll see that they have the same four uh, action markers with a few small adjustments. Um, but the idea is the same. You're trying to play these action markers uh, to play your cards, and they'll go to either side of the tableau, yours or your opponent's. And if you have more influence on your side of the tableau than your opponents, you're going to win that geisha. Now the difference is, uh, depending, on, depending on the numbers you play, in, in this one you'll see that uh, the numbers are different for the same color. If you play a one, uh, the geisha will move one step clockwise. If you play a four, they'll move four steps clockwise. And they score, it's no longer a fixed score. But when they do return home, uh, they will be able to get a token from the very... Uh, right here, um, the first column for the first time they return, and it's possible they'll return a second time to get a, a second column. Now, if you have more influence on your side of the tableau than your opponent, you're going to win this, the points in the middle. Uh, there's a base of one plus however many are here. If you win four or five of the geisha uh, outright, you win instantly, and you don't have to play a second round. Otherwise, we'll score with points, uh, we'll score each geisha, and then you'll also potentially score with the guest tokens that you collect in a set collection manner. Okay, so compared to Hanami, Hanami Koji, this time the geishas actually walks around Kyoto. Yes. If they make it all the way around, they'll get a token. Uh, they, the geishas are worth one point by itself, but the tokens are range from two to three points, right? So each geisha, if they manage to walk all the way around twice, they could potentially get seven points, right? That was yes. one plus three plus three, or something in between. So uh, instead of winning the geisha outright, how many times they walk around actually now matters. And uh, players can also get points even without winning the geisha from the collecting the guests. So it's a lot more It's a lot more to think about than Hanami Koji. So let's talk about what the strategies are. So uh, at the beginning of our, at, the, at our opening hand, what are some of the actions you recommend doing? So... For, for myself, I typically, the easiest one to do maybe is the three. This is the one where you draw, you take three cards from your hand and show uh, them to your opponent. So, and then you would have them pick one of them to put on their side and you get the other two. So what I typically try to do is to look for certain sets where I would be able to you know, potentially be ahead and um, uh, win, let's say, a part of your color or uh, maybe win all the uh, colors of a particular uh, guest set. So, for example, here is a yellow two, one, and a four, and you could see in order yellow and then red here. So we know that if we play the one and four, uh, somehow it doesn't matter who, who will play them, the, the red geisha will go five steps and go back home and score uh, two more points. Um, the other, so if they take the, the yellow, uh, you'll get... One plus two, three points, and you'll be ahead five to zero on, on the red. Um, the other thing, because they, they may think, okay, well, uh, I don't want that to happen. I want to be ahead on the red. So they take the red four, and then you'll take one step and then two steps here. The one step uh, red geisha allows you to take uh, two guest tokens or the tiebreaker uh, and a guest token. And then the two will allow you to take one item. So you'll be able to take you know, up to three uh, guest tokens. Uh, in this case. So it might be a way to consider starting. Um, there's other possibilities, of course, depending on your strategy. Uh, the four is also a one that uh, could work. Um, one very interesting combination I've seen some players play is actually with uh, a very um, differentiated start. So as mentioned, if you go for um, four or five of the geishas, you win instantly. And so uh, it's possible that you start with something like a 4-1 and a 1-4 of some sort. Oh, sorry, 1-1 one, one and 4-4. Four, four. And then this will split the strategy very divergently so that one person is already aiming to get guests, which are a lot of points, and the other uh, player is trying to 
basically end the game instantly and get uh, four out of the five uh, geisha before you know you bother scoring points. Right. So uh, if you open the if your opening hand is a four four and a one one, and you choose that, uh, you put out four cards and then you let them you put it in this way. You're basically essentially letting your opponent decide if they want to dominate the geisha side or they. You, or they want to just try to collect as many tokens as they can, right? Right. It, it's a, it's an intriguing way to start the game. Right. <laughs> we're gonna decide how we're gonna play at the very first hand, and this is kind of like how this game works. You, if you're, if you're not, sh you have to kind of read what your opponent want and then play tactically. Yeah, uh, it's a short game because there's only four uh, four moves, um, so you know sometimes. It's it's helpful if depending on the cards you have in your hand, right? It's good to be bold with your strategy. For example, if you have um, maybe this is good on the second turn, right? When you have already some some more uh, development in place, mm -hmm. and then you see that okay, I do have a lot of fours and ones, and I'm gonna play the four for one one, and I, I feel okay regardless of the way they develop because um, you'll have chances down the road to, for example, discard a four, right? Which could help your opponent. Uh, and keep it one, or vice versa, if you're going the other strategy. But what is a good time to play the one token, which is just play one card outright, and the number two token, which is basically keep a card for yourself and discard a card, and the opponent doesn't know what you did? So I think in the beginning, uh, actually a lot of beginner players will play the one first, and uh, it's per perfectly valid. Um, it's also, I think, a slow play strategy, where you don't reveal a lot about your hand, mm -hmm. And uh, maybe you you go for one of these uh, with a one or a four, um, just to, to to get something right. You you control at least one geisha at the beginning a little bit more, or you'll get a couple guests. Um, <clears throat> I typically like to keep it because it's you only have two moves where you can control the destiny of your cards. It's the one and then the hidden card on the two, and so it's helpful to be a bit more strategic. But if you're you know willing to slow play and just take the chance or what you'll draw later on. Uh, you could try to play the one and two earlier. Right, you did mention that you like to open with a three token or the four token. And it's because you think it's probably uh, to, you wanna have more control towards the second half of the game. That's with a one token and a two token. Right, right. Okay, so we're in the middle of the game. Uh, it's looking like I'm going to be winning a lot of geisha because I happen to be drawing the higher number of cards or it's going my way. So what are some of the things I should be looking out for or try to accomplish? Yeah, so uh, having a lot of the value on each of the geisha is good for winning them, but unless they have the, these tokens, they're not worth a lot. So they're either worth, you know, potentially one point, and maybe if they got, uh, you know, one of these, it's, it's, you know, three points or four points. So what you're trying to do is to maximize the number of points you get on a winning geisha. Um, that means trying to make sure that uh, the geisha go back home. Uh, and how they go back is really dependent on the cards that come out. So, for example, um, if you have played a two and then a three, right, you'll take two steps and then three more steps and then get the geisha to go back home. Similarly, if you play a one and then a four, the geisha will take one step and then four steps to go back. So if the cards add up to five in that order, um, then they'll go back. So you try to get them to go back twice, get them to be played in a certain order. Uh, if they're in mixed order, they'll only go back once. And of course, if they're in mixed order and you have one card that's discarded, they may not go back at all. Um, so try to invest in uh, the geishas that uh, are going to be you know, higher worth, right? that go back more often, um, and try not to you know, uh, cause the ones that... Uh, that you are ahead on to, to get stuck, basically. Right, so in that case, you probably want to, like you say, maybe slow play, don't reveal to the to your opponent right away that you're going to be able to win that geisha, right? So like, if you play a four and a one right away, and they don't have a two and a three in their hand, they, they'll probably be like, well, then I don't want this geisha to go, to go around twice because then all the points are, is going to go to you. So maybe play play the one first or play the two first and then let them play all their cards first before you put down that one final card, right? Right, right, yeah. So um, like you were saying, if you know, you know your opponent is going to win that one, you probably want to discard the card 
and so prevent them from getting more points or any points except for the, the one base point. Um, if to on your side, of course, to prevent that from happening, you'd like to build it up so you're, you're almost tied, and then ideally you get the tiebreaker and win it, and so you both have two cards on or you know one card on both sides, but you you get the most number of points and uh, be able to uh, also you know win everything on on the geisha. So on the other hand, what if I see my opponent getting all the big cards and I have a bunch of lower cards? And I don't know if I'm going to be winning the geishas. Uh, what's not, what is the strategy that I should be doing then? So uh, another way to try to get points is to collect the guest tokens. Um, the guest tokens are scored in sets. So if you have, let's say, two of the same color, uh, that'll be one point. If you collect all three, it'll be worth uh, four points here. Um, so that's that's one way to get points. The other is to collect the sets of different geisha. So if you have two of the different colors, it's one point. Three is three points. Four is six points. And all five is ten points. So uh, if you collect a lot of guest tokens, it's actually potentially worth uh, quite a lot of points and uh, potentially could outweigh even the, the geisha scoring. What you have to be careful, of course, is that you don't lose outright because your opponent captures four or five of the, of the geishas on the board. Um, so as long as you try to maintain control of about one and tie on another and then try to go for as many uh, ones and twos and the cards, because those are the cards that allow you to collect guest tokens, um, that will help you uh, with the strategy. Right, that's a good reminder. If you start out the game thinking that, okay, I'm going to go for the tokens, but if you just let the game run away uh, with the other person winning at least four geisha, then it doesn't matter how many points you have on the tokens, you still lose. Right. Yeah. right. Okay, when would be a good time to take the tiebreaker token? So, obviously, when you need it for the tie. <laughs> um, a lot of times it's, you know, Based on the card you have, you can try to anticipate if you're going to run into a tie situation, um, particularly if you know both sides uh, have cards. And uh, the easiest tie to get is maybe the one and the four on one side and two and three on the other. So if you see a four and two on one side or a one and four, sorry, two and a, two and a four or a three and a four, then you know that there's probably not a strong need for a tiebreaker and you could ignore those cases. But if you know you have the one and they have the three and then you have a four in your hand you're like well i may need a tiebreaker token and you would look to see if there's a card you can play in the i cut you choose or maybe the one directly where you can capture the the uh, tiebreaker beforehand right because depending on which uh action token you play the order of who takes the token depends on the token itself right yeah, in an I cut you choose situation, if uh, you offer cards, uh, the other player who takes the cards will move and take the tokens, and then you'll move your based on the cards you have, and then take the tokens then. Right. So if you if it's Im imperative for you to be able to get that token, you might want to play the one so that you play the card and then take the token. Correct. Yeah. Right. Okay. So um, in Geisha's row, there's actually an expansion that was added that for advanced players. So tell us about that. So th there's a few expansions uh, to adjust and uh, make it a little bit more uh, variable. Um, the, the, this is the advanced rules expansion. There's two tokens that are added. Uh, these are optional uh, tokens. Uh, so if you don't use them, you get a point each. Uh, the first one I'll, I'll mention is called the hidden offer. Uh, this is played with the three or the four, these uh, I cut you choose actions. So when you play a uh, sorry a three or a four action, usually you would show them all face up. Um, but if you use the hidden offer token with it, uh, you'll be able to put one card face down in your offer, and your opponent won't know exactly which what is the exact choice they're trying to offer. And if they take it, then when they flip it, they'll have to play it. Then tricky. Yeah, it uh, adds a little bit of extra element of mind games for people who who like that. Yeah, I, I think uh, there, there's a couple ways to do it. Um, I think typically people see this first and they try to put down a card that they know is really valuable, but they don't want people to take. What I found actually is um, people are intrigued by the turn down card and they often take it. So what I do is do the reverse and play maybe a card that isn't so interesting face down with other interesting cards. 
in the hopes that maybe they'll take the face down card and then I'll have you know the cards that I actually like face up. So if you watch this video and you happen to be playing against Jerry, if he ever does that, then uh, do a double bluff on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about the other uh, token? That's the counter, right? So how does it work? So the counter offer is used when you're offered uh, a three or a four action. So let's say, um, for example's sake, you were offered, um, let, let's say this was already in play, that your opponent has a four and a one on their side, and you're offered, let's say, uh, a one yellow and a three green, and a, let's say, a one blue and a two green, right? So something, something like this, right? And you'll know that what, regardless of what uh, set you take, um, the green uh, geisha is going to go back a second time in a row, a second time back home because they're going to take another five steps back. Um, and uh, your opponent's going to score that one because they already have five, and it doesn't matter if they take the two or three. So ideally, you'd like to switch out the two or the three and put a different card uh, in this in this mix. And so what you can do is the player counter offer, and then take a card from your hand, uh, replace the card from your hand with the uh, one here, uh, shuffle the card you replaced and then draw a new card back into your hand and then your opponent will pick first between these two sets. Can I counter the counter offer? Uh, you can, if you still have it around. It's, these are one-time use tokens, so if you already had countered, then yeah, you're out of luck. <laughs> That's kind of fun. All right. So, uh, and also with another expansion, the tokens actually flipped over, right? The the point tokens for the geisha. How does that work? Yeah. So included in this is, uh, if you look at the back side of this score marker card, um, is what we call the Geisha's Destiny expansion. And instead of having nine tokens out, you'll select five randomly, uh, and then flip two of them randomly to the dark side. Uh, you'll notice that each of the tokens. There's a big number, which is the actual point value for this side, and a small number, which tells you what it looks like on the back side. Mm -hmm. And so when you have um, these five tokens that are nine, how the, war the game now works is the first time that you go back, you take from the very right uh, to the token here. It goes on to the geisha. But the second time that they go back, it flips to the other side. So you'll know that the geisha is going to potentially score more points, like going from two points to six points. Uh, score less points, going from six to two points, uh, score uh, negative points from three to minus three, mm. or the other way, which is minus three to three. So uh, there's some control you'll know for where the geisha's route is going to go, and uh, you may that may change your strategy accordingly. Right. So we, with the expansion in play, you really have to watch how the tokens were lined up. So you kind of want the desirable one, the one with the six points, maybe land on the geisha that you're trying to score. And if there is a negative one or a potential negative point that's put on a geisha, if you are trying to score that geisha, maybe you don't want it to go all the way around twice because you don't want it to flip the negative side. But if you... Or you can try to get the opponent to win that one by discarding cards and flip it over so they actually get negative points, right? Right, yeah. You, the, the strategy a lot of times is the opposite where it's, you know, you try to feed the points to uh, your opponent and they're, they're the bad points. Right, and make it go all the way around. Even in this situation, uh, you can still try to go for the guest to get the token points. Yeah, the guest tokens are always positive points, so that might be the sure way to play if... Right, yeah, right. but even if the points are negative, again, if you win four out of the five, even if they're negative points, you, you'll still win the game. All right, there's that. Yeah, right. yeah. So, um, including the expansion, is there like a general tip that you have for our viewers? Yeah, uh, I think the game has has quite a bit of depth for a, a small footprint and uh, you know four actions, but. Um, in general, I, I think the main tip is to make the choices hard for your opponent. Uh, make them as agonizing as possible so that they are not really sure what to pick. Uh, because whatever they pick, they're probably going to uh, you know, lose some points from the cards that they don't pick. <laughs> um, so set them up in situations where you know, they, they have maybe sunk costs that they need to overcome and uh, areas where the, you know, they, they just don't have... 
the choices that they would love to have、uh, in place. Because this way, you also win at how much fun you have, right? Yeah, I think part of the fun of this game is actually in the creativity of the choices that you have, and thinking through, okay, what what should I do in this situation? <laughs> okay, so Geisha's Row, Hanan Mikoji, and if you're interested, Shadows and in Kyoto, a series of three games in the Geisha world for Empress Four. How how can we get it? Where can we buy it? So you can definitely go to Emperor S Four's、uh, website.、Uh, they have about a hundred copies left of、uh, Geisha's Road,、um, but they are definitely reprints、uh, in mind. And then、um, there's also discussions with publishers、uh, abroad. So、um, that will happen sometime in 2023, and hopefully that will be able to you'll you'll find it more available in your local game store or、uh, online there. Well, Jerry, thank you so much for showing me how to play and how to win Geisha's Row, and thank you guys for watching. Bye.